Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. When producing output, firms face several different types of production costs. These costs account for the wages and rents required to purchase the fixed and variable resources needed to produce output. While these costs are a burden on a firm's pocketbook, they also help the firm determine the precise level of output to produce in order to maximize profits. In order to closely analyze production costs, economists graph production cost data to create cost curves. These curves clearly visualize the trends and patterns of the fixed, variable, and total costs of production and how they correlate to the output level of the firm. The cost curves can make it easier for economists to pinpoint the precise levels of output where firms can experience several conditions, including productive and allocative efficiency or profit maximization. Cost curves can even help economists determine when a firm must make the difficult decision to close its doors and shut down production. Let's take a closer look at graphing cost curves. Provided is the production cost data for a small diner in your hometown. Here we can see the fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost of production at various levels of output. Notice that fixed costs remain constant at every output level, while variable costs and total costs increase as output increases. Also notice that the difference between the total cost and variable cost of production at each output level is the sum of the fixed production cost for the firm. From here, we can use the data provided to graph the production cost curves for the diner. These curves will visualize the trends and patterns of the fixed, variable, and total costs of production and how they correlate to the output level of the firm. Let's begin with the fixed cost curve. The first step is to plot the fixed cost for the firm at each level of output. Then, we connect these points with a curve to show graphically what happens to fixed production costs as the diner produces more food. Now let's graph the variable cost curve. After plotting the variable cost for the firm at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve, we can see graphically what happens to the variable production costs as the diner produces more food. Lastly, let's graph the total cost curve. After plotting the total cost for the firm at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve, we can see graphically what happens to the total production costs as the diner produces more food. Take a look at the trends and patterns in the diner's production costs. First, notice that fixed costs remain constant regardless of the number of meals produced by the diner. Also, notice that variable costs and total costs increase as the diner produces more meals and decrease as the diner produces fewer meals. Also notice that the space between the total cost and variable cost curves at each output level is equal to the sum of fixed costs for the diner. Lastly, notice that the total cost curve does not begin at zero when output is at zero. Instead, it begins at $100 because it must account for the firm's fixed production costs. These costs must be paid by the diner before production even begins. When changes occur in a firm's production costs, the firm's cost curves will shift to visualize those changes. For example, suppose that the diner's fixed production costs increase to $150. A $50 increase in fixed costs will cause the total cost of production to rise for the diner by $50 at every output level. To visualize this change in production costs, we can plot the new fixed and total costs for the diner at each level of output. Then, we connect these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to fixed and total production costs for the firm. Essentially, the increase in fixed costs from $100 to $150 is represented by a shift upward in the fixed cost and total cost curves. Notice that the variable cost curve did not shift. This is because a change in fixed costs only impacts the fixed cost curve 
and the total cost curve. Also notice that the space between the variable cost curve and the total cost curve grew larger due to the $50 increase in fixed production costs. Now suppose that the diner's fixed production costs decrease to $50. A $100 decrease in fixed costs will cause the total cost of production to fall for the diner by $100 at every output level. Again, we can visualize this change in production costs by plotting the diner's new fixed and total cost at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to fixed and total production costs for the firm. Essentially, the decrease in fixed costs from $150 to $50 is represented by a shift downward in the fixed cost and total cost curves. Again, notice that the variable cost curve did not shift because a change in fixed costs only impacts the fixed cost curve and total cost curve. Also notice that the space between the variable cost curve and the total cost curve grew smaller due to the $100 decrease in fixed production costs. How about changes in variable costs? Well, assume that the diner's variable production costs increase. An increase in variable costs will cause the total cost of production to rise for the diner at every output level. Again, we can visualize this change in production costs by plotting the diner's new variable and total costs at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to variable and total production costs for the firm. Essentially, the increase in variable costs is represented by a shift upward in the variable cost and total cost curves. Notice that the fixed cost curve did not shift. Remember that, Ceteris Paribus, fixed costs remain constant regardless of how many meals the diner serves. Instead, a change in variable cost only impacts the variable cost curve and total cost curve. Also notice the space between the variable cost curve and the total cost curve is still equal to the sum of fixed costs for the diner. Now assume that the diner's variable production costs decrease. A decrease in variable costs will cause the total cost of production to fall for the diner at every output level. Again, we can visualize this change in production costs by plotting the diner's new variable and total costs at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to the variable and total production costs for the firm. Essentially, the decrease in variable costs is represented by a shift downward in the variable cost and total cost curves. Again, notice that the fixed cost curve did not shift because a change in variable costs only impacts the variable cost curve and total cost curve. Also notice the space between the variable cost curve and total cost curve is still equal to the sum of fixed costs for the diner. Now let's turn our attention towards per unit cost curves. Provided is the per unit production cost data for the diner. Here we can see the average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and the marginal cost of production at various levels of output. Notice that the fixed cost per unit decreases as the diner produces more meals, while variable costs, total costs, and marginal costs initially decrease and then increase as output increases. Also notice that the difference between the average total cost and average variable cost of production at each output level is the sum of the average fixed production costs for the firm. From here, we can use the data provided to graph the per unit production cost curves for the diner. These curves will visualize the trends and patterns of the fixed, variable, total, and marginal costs of production per meal as the diner scales its output. We will use the same process we used earlier and plot the cost data provided and connect these points with a curve. Here we can see the average fixed cost curve, the average variable cost curve, the average total cost curve, and the marginal cost curve for the diner. Take a look at the trends and patterns in the diner's per unit production costs. First, Notice that the fixed cost curve decreases as total product increases. While this curve will continue to fall as the diner produces more meals, it's important to note that the AFC curve will never hit zero. You see, 
As production increases, the diner's fixed production costs, which remain constant, are divided among more and more meals. As long as there are fixed overhead costs for the firm, each plate of food, no matter how many are produced, will have to account for a small portion of the diner's fixed production costs. Also notice that the space between the average total cost and average variable cost curves at each output level is equal to the sum of the diner's average fixed cost. In addition, notice that the average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost curves initially decrease and then increase as the diner produces more meals. This is due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. Initially, variable resources are more productive for the diner, meaning each unit of output they produce has a lower variable cost, leading to a lower marginal cost and total cost per meal. Then, as diminishing returns sets in, each additional variable resource is less productive than the last, causing the variable cost per unit of output to increase again and driving up the marginal cost and total cost per meal. Lastly, take a look at one more important fact about per unit cost curves. Notice that the marginal cost curve intercepts the AVC and ATC curves at their lowest or minimum point. Wait, how do we know that for sure? Well, it's simple really. Think about what marginal data does to average data. Imagine I gather 20 of you into a room and ask you all to reveal your net worth. After adding it all together, I count a total net worth of $2,000 between the 20 of you. Dividing the total net worth by the number of earners in the room, I can conclude that the average net worth in the room is $100 per person. Then, in walks Jeff Bezos. This dude is worth an estimated $185 billion and some change. When we add his net worth and divide by 21 people, the net worth per person in the room skyrockets to 8,809,523,904 dollars and change. Congratulations, you're all rich, except you're not. Mr. Bezos's immense wealth was a marginal addition to our average. Because his net wealth is so much greater than ours, his marginal contribution to our total net wealth drove up the average net worth per person. The same is true for a firm's per unit production costs. When the marginal cost of each new unit is decreasing, it drives down the variable and total cost per unit, causing the slope of the AVC and ATC curves to fall. However, once the marginal cost of each new unit begins to increase and then eventually becomes greater than the variable cost per unit, it will drive up the average variable cost of each new unit, causing the slope of the AVC curve to climb. Then, once the marginal cost of each new unit becomes greater than the total cost per unit, it will drive up the average total cost of each new unit, causing the slope of the ATC curve to climb as well. As a result, we can definitively prove that the MC curve intercepts the AVC and the ATC curves at their minimum point, meaning that this point and this point represent when average variable cost and average total cost are at their lowest for the firm. When changes occur in a firm's per unit production costs, the firm's per unit cost curves will shift to visualize those changes. Let's go back to when the diner's fixed production costs increased to $150. This $50 increase in fixed costs will drive up the diner's fixed cost and total cost per meal at every output level. We can visualize these changes in per unit production costs by plotting the diner's new average fixed cost and average total cost at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to fixed and total cost per unit for the firm. Essentially, the increase in fixed cost is represented by a shift upward in the AFC and ATC curves. Notice that the AVC curve did not shift because a change in fixed costs only impacts the AFC curve and ATC curve. Also notice that the space between the AVC and the ATC curves grew larger due to an increase in the average fixed cost at every level of output.
When the diner's fixed production costs fell to $50, the $100 decrease in fixed costs will drive down the diner's fixed cost and total cost per meal at every output level. We can visualize these changes in per unit production costs by plotting the diner's new average fixed cost and average total cost at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to fixed and total cost per unit for the firm. Essentially, the decrease in fixed costs is represented by a shift downward in the AFC and ATC curves. Again, notice that the AVC curve did not shift because a change in fixed costs only impacts the AFC and the ATC curves. Also notice the space between the AVC and the ATC curves grew smaller due to a decrease in the average fixed cost at every level of output. What about changes in variable costs? An increase in the diner's variable production costs will drive up the average variable cost and average total cost for the diner, leading to an increase in the marginal cost of each meal. We can visualize these changes in per unit production costs by plotting the diner's new average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost at each level of output, and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to the variable and total cost per unit as well as the marginal cost of each additional meal produced by the diner. Essentially, an increase in variable costs is represented by a shift upward in the MC, AVC, and ATC curves. Notice that the AFC curve did not shift because a change in variable costs only impacts the MC curve, AVC curve, and ATC curve. Also notice the space between the AVC and the ATC curves is still equal to the sum of average fixed costs at every level of output. A decrease in the diner's variable production costs will drive down the average variable cost and average total cost for the diner, leading to a decrease in the marginal cost of each meal. We can visualize these changes in per unit production costs by plotting the diner's new average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost at each level of output and connecting these points with a curve to show graphically what has happened to the variable and total cost per unit, as well as the marginal cost of each additional meal produced by the diner. Essentially, a decrease in variable costs is represented by a shift downward in the MC, AVC, and ATC curves. Notice that the AFC curve did not shift because a change in variable costs only impacts the MC curve, AVC curve, and ATC curve. Also notice the space between the AVC and the ATC curves is still equal to the sum of average fixed costs at every level of output. And that's graphing cost curves. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on production costs, or you can click here for my video on the long run average total cost curve and economies of scale. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.